Hello, everyone. Good afternoon or good morning. <laughs> I'm on the East Coast, so it's afternoon over here. Uh, welcome to the Getting Started with the Give Back Tahoe Giving Season webinar. Thank you so much for everyone attending. Really appreciate it. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Lisa. I am the Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Uh, we're the technology providers for Give Back Tahoe. For those of you who are not familiar with Mighty Cause, we've been in the crowdfunding space since 2006. We've helped raise over $650 million for over 30,000 nonprofits. We're one of the leading uh, giving day technology platforms. Um, and we're here to help support organizations with their fundraising needs and for their Give Back Tahoe campaign. So this year's Give Back Tahoe giving season will be from December 1st to December 15th. That's when challenge grants will be provided. You can utilize the entire month to fundraise for your end of year uh, fundraising campaign, but the challenge prize uh, time frame is from December 1st to December 15th. And of course, it's hosted by the Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation. Um, we're first gonna go over some key things about Give Back Tahoe this year. And then at the very end, I will be going over uh, a technical walkthrough of some key things that you wanna keep in mind as you're utilizing the platform. For some organizations, if you're new to the platform, uh, you're gonna learn where you can find key information. For returning organizations, this is going to be a refresher um, so that you can be reminded of where you can go to access uh, you know, your donation reports, et cetera. So I'm going to um, pass a, these couple of slides to Caroline um, from the Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation. Um, so uh, Caroline, if you wanna jump on, you can take over. Hi everyone, this is Caroline speaking. Um, I guess you already have received my email, um, but I am, I recently joined the TTCF team about a month ago, so I will be on this learning journey with you today. Um, and I really look forward to working with you on Give Back Tahoe these next few months. Um, but we're really excited that the platform is gonna be available year round for you to use as both the donation platform um, and volunteer portal. And then as Lisa said, we have shortened the giving season to only be December 1st and December 15th this year. Um, we just felt with promotions and some of the feedback we were getting was it would be better to just focus on those first two weeks. And then again, the platform will still be available for you to use for any end of year um, donations. So we just wanted to call out, um, I know it's been a busy month, few months for all of you guys, but um, Placer Shares just finishing up and hopefully some of you were involved in that grant cycle. And then our community grant cycle was pushed back a little bit because of that. Um, so September 14th, it'll open up and then you have until October 11th. And then the Give Back Tahoe giving season, obviously December 1st to 15th. And then the Emergency Response Fund, um, we've already um, distributed about over 800,000 from the Emergency Response Fund, and it is still ongoing. So just an FYI there. And again, if you need anything or have any questions or ideas, um, feel free to reach out to me. Awesome, thanks so much, Caroline. Uh, so as we move forward in the slide deck. Of course, uh, Give Back Tahoe, um, we had an incredibly successful year last year, raised over $338,000 from over 1,400 generous donors. And um, of course, we're always here to help raise awareness for Tahoe trucking nonprofits. So let's get started and talking about this year and what your organizations can do for your campaign. So of course, the first step is always to register your nonprofit. Um, every year you will have to complete this registration form. So you wanna do the same thing that you did last year and you wanna complete the registration form. It's a really short form, so it should be sweet and easy. The registration form is currently open. So if you go to givebacktahoe.org, you'll see it right, it's the primary call to action. Um, and you'll have until October 9th 
to complete your registration form. This is going to a preview for the challenge season and make you eligible for prizes. Um, one of the things that I'll be talking through uh, in the technical walkthrough is your fundraising pages, your organization profile. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind when editing your profile and editing your fundraising page is the story that you're going to be sharing this year for Give Back Tahoe. Uh, what do you want to relate to your donors? What's different about your organization in 2020 than 2019? Obviously, there are a lot of events in the world that's happened since then. So how has your organization been impacted? Why would donations um, within the Give Back Tahoe challenge season be really important for your organization? So those are a couple of things that you want to consider as you begin editing your profile and your fundraising pages. And another thing we'll also be discussing is your organization profile versus peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. We can also talk about this a little bit in more detail on the second webinar we'll be hosting um, about fundraising strategies. But you have a lot of different campaign pages available to your organization, and you may wanna consider thinking about if you wanna do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising um, uh, campaign. For organizations that are returning back to their to the platform, you guys have participated last year. Uh, one of the most important things that you want to make sure that you're doing when you log back in is to reset your metrics. The metrics that will be displayed on your organization profile are going to show last year's uh, total raise. And so you want to make sure you head back in and reset those so that you're showing donors what you're raising this year. And again, we'll, I'll show you that in the technical walkthrough. Of course, uh, there are toolkit resources that are going to be available to you throughout the campaign. Uh, the toolkit will have a lot of links to great support articles, some tips, FAQs, um, templates, et cetera. So please utilize this information. Uh, we wanna make your lives easier as you're starting your campaign and strategizing. Uh, what you're planning on doing and um, the emails and social media that you're planning for your campaign. So definitely check that out. And again, that can be found at givebacktaco.org. When we're also talking about strategy, I spoke a little bit about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, and part of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is activating your ambassadors and thinking about who in your network of supporters, if that's board members, volunteers, et cetera, um, how can they help support your organization during this challenge season, during Give Back Tahoe? Um, so again, in the framework of getting your organization reset, um, technically, this is a great thing to start thinking about for the challenge season. Um, how can you utilize your support network to the best of your ability. And of course, making sure that you're starting your communication for the giving event. Um, sending out emails, social media, newsletters, making sure that donors are aware of the challenge season and the campaign that you have provided, and as well providing donors a clear call to action. Early donations, our donors can start donating to your organization December 1st. So you also want to make sure that you're communicating with donors that your, the challenge season is going to start on Giving Tuesday, December 1st, and that's when they can start donating to your organization and supporting your nonprofit. And of course, um, if you have any questions after this webinar or you run into any questions as you begin getting set up, please feel free to contact our support team, support at mightycause.com. We're always here to help you in whatever capacity we can. Um, so please reach out to us. Uh, we are on the East Coast, so just please be aware um, that our support hours are within Eastern Standard Time. Um, so I'm going to jump into the technical walkthrough. Uh, on your GoToWebinar control panel, there is a questions area. So if you run into any questions as we're going through this walkthrough, please type them into the questions area. Uh, also at the very end, I'll be answering questions. Um, so 
please let me know if you run into any. Okay. Okay, great. So as you see here right now, I'm in my organization profile. Uh, if you're set up as an administrator for an organization, you'll see a dashboard on your left hand side. This is where you're going to be able to edit and manage your organization. For returning organizations, you may notice that your dashboard has had a refresher. We've actually updated the dashboard since last year to make it much easier for organizations to navigate seamlessly through the platform and be able to access your information much more quickly. Uh, so that's one thing to know in regards to updates on the platform. Your organization profile is really the hub of your nonprofit presence on the, um, on the platform. So many organizations will utilize this profile page um, as the primary page where they're going to solicit donations, they're going to utilize this URL uh, to send out to donors to make a donation. One thing that I had mentioned in the slide deck was the ability to create peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. And I just want to quickly show that to get um, um, you uh, organizations the idea of what's possible on the platform. And you can start thinking about if it's something that you want to decide to do. So one form of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is our event fundraising page. Um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tool where you can have teams and individual participants participating in it. You can have people create their own fundraisers and be a part of a larger um, campaign. The other is a team fundraising page. Now, a team fundraising page would be perfect for a peer-to-peer -peer campaign where you're just having individual participants um, want to join a collective group and help fundraise. And as you see through this leaderboard, each individual participant will have their own fundraising page where they can solicit donations to their friends and family. Now, if you are not, uh, if you're not interested, or you're not planning on running a peer-to-peer -peer campaign, you can also utilize this individual fundraising page as um, a campaign for Give Back Tahoe. If you want to raise money for a particular program or a particular mission, this type of fundraising page would be a, a great um, you know, tool to utilize to send to donors. So you have a couple of different fundraising pages available to you depending on you know, what your campaign strategy is and what you're planning. Um, and again, we'll get to more detail about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising in the fundraising strategies webinar, but I just wanted to highlight this to give you an idea. And of course, as I mentioned, the organization profile is the most popular option organizations are going to utilize um, for their campaign. Usually organizations will stick to this profile page as their primary um, donation hub for Give Back Tahoe or or the giving event they're participating in. And on the slide deck, I had mentioned that for returning organizations, one of the most important things that you're going to want to do is reset your metrics. So as you see here, I have $225 raised by two donors, and I have a goal set. Um, if you haven't used the platform since last year, you may have the information you had last year. So what you want to do is update that, and I'll show you what you want to do. So since I am logged in, I, you'll see these uh, blue pencil icons next to these areas. If you ever want to edit a particular area, you can simply select that blue pencil icon. So I'm going to go ahead and select this blue pencil icon. And then you'll see that this little pop-up menu has opened up and it allows me to change the stats that I have displayed on my organization profile. So I can choose, I want to display uh, dollars raised and number of donors. And then I can choose the date that it's going to calculate from. I have July 1st. Um, now for Give Back Tahoe, donations are going to start counting from December 1st. So I'm actually going to set uh, my date to December 1st. And 
and I'm going to set it at night. So once I have that added in, it's going to update your metrics automatically. And you'll see now that it's at $0 raised by zero donors. So really easy and simple to go ahead and update. With the goal, again, I can just select the pencil icon, select edit goal, and then change my goal amount. This year, our goal will be $10,000. So now that I've edited my goal and my metrics, I can scroll down and also update the about section. This is the area that I was referring to in regards to telling your story. We've also updated the inline text editor at the very top of your about section. So this year, you actually have the opportunity of um, customizing your about section even more. You can highlight, you can uh, change font color. So there's a lot more options available to you. A common thing that nonprofits will also do is create an infographic if you are working with a graphic designer or someone who um, you know is has an arts background. Um, create an infographic through a photo editor etc and actually import that as a photo on here um, so you have a lot of different opportunities again to share your story about your organization and um, you know the impact of donations and what what they would have for your organization this year and of course within your organization profile you will always have the ability to share images so you want to make sure you're heading back here updating the images you have here, and if possible, connecting with your Instagram photos and Facebook photos so that images are automatically updated for you um, as you're adding them to Instagram and Facebook. So within your organization profile, that's really the key things that you want to consider updating um, from a profile front-facing aspect. Now in regards to the back end, you're going to want to make sure that you are updating your checkout flow. So when a donor clicks donate, the options that they're seeing on the checkout form and as well the messaging they're receiving once they have finished checking out. So to update your checkout flow, on your left-hand side dashboard, you want to make sure you're selecting fundraising and then you are selecting checkout flow. The checkout flow area will have the suggested donations and descriptions if you have that enabled. And it'll also show you the data collection points that you're um, currently collecting. Post checkout, the, the tab uh, to the right of checkout steps, allows you to update the thank you page, the page that pops up when a donor completes their donation, and also provides you the ability to edit that thank you message. So these are things, two things that you definitely wanna make sure that you're going in and um, making sure that you're editing and updating it in case that you have any outdated language, outdated images, videos, etc. All right, now that you've updated really the key things that are important for uh, your checkout experience and your profile page, um, you'll want to also uh, go make sure that you're aware of the different reports um, and things that you can utilize for your campaign from a strategic perspective. So one thing that I wanna call out is our overview section. Now, this is something that we actually recently just updated, so it's really exciting for us over here. Uh, but the overview section will give you an idea of key metrics for your organization, such as dollars raised, number of unique donors, profile visits, and it'll also make you aware of where you are during the registration process. If you've completed registration for Give Back Tahoe yet, if you're pending and if you've been approved. So this is an area that you can quickly glance at, take a look at, um, and 
update your information. You also have the ability to add additional metrics on here. Um, so if you want to, you know, see your profile visits, as I said, or review the number of volunteers you've received, those are all things that you can add to your overview so you can keep track of that really easily on a daily basis. The report section of your left-hand side dashboard is where you're going to find all of the information on the donations that you received through the platform. So all donations is going to break that down and it's going to show you the donor, the amount, as well as the date of the donation. And of course, all of this can be exported into a CSV file by utilizing the download button at the very top. The top filters will also allow you to choose the type of donor information that you want to see. Perhaps you want to see all donations you received last year. And you can also choose to look at all of your recurring don donations. One of the um, reports that are available to you that will be really useful for your organization is the retention report. Now, this is a really great tool to utilize when thinking about the donors that you want to target for this challenge season. So, so the retention report will actually tell you the donors that you've retained or you haven't retained since last year. So you can choose uh, the type of donor that you want to look at. Like I said, you can look at all or you can look at, let's say you want to see your not retained donors. Those are the donors that you want to target this year and have them make a donation again this year. And then you can choose the period of time that you're basing that off of. Right now we have this year to date that we haven't retained them. Now automatically, I have a list of all the donors that we haven't retained that last that made their donation last year. So this is a really great email segment to simply download and put into your email marketing system or send an email to. So I highly recommend utilizing this retention report when thinking about your email marketing strategy and your email segments that you want to do for your challenge season. And of course, your disbursement report is going to provide you information on the disbursements that you've received. Uh, if you have set up direct deposit, that is funds will be dispersed twice a month on the 10th or the 25th. Um, and if you've not set up direct deposit, um, a check will be dispersed once a month around the 10th. But you can always keep track of disbursements within your disbursement report. And you can um, review a breakdown of, you know, the totals, et cetera. Within the settings section, um, also for returning organizations, you'll see that this has also been updated to make it much more convenient and easy for our organizations to navigate. Um, the general settings will break down email uh, URL customization as well as your social sharing. Uh, the description and image that shows up when someone shares a URL of your uh, organization profile on Facebook or a Twitter. Organization information will show the display information that you would like to share organ, um, to donors, as well as the legal information on the back end um, in regards to your organization. Disbursement settings will provide uh, information regards to your disbursement report. And then admins will allow you to manage all of your administrators. So either add additional manager, um, add additional administrators with the add new admin button or delete administrators by selecting the X next to the corresponding administrator you want to remove. Um, some other additional tools that you may be utilizing for your Give Back Tahoe campaign is our volunteers tool and our matching grants tool. So I'm going to go over that right now. So the, the volunteer section and the matching grants tool is available in the fundraising section of the left-hand side dashboard. 
The matching grants tool provides you the ability to add a matching grant onto your organization profile or any fundraising campaign on the platform. The tool allows you to create a match based off the current match setup that you're planning. So if that's a one-to-one -one match or maybe a cum cumulative threshold match, um, we have a lot of different actually match types available. Um, so the world is your oyster in regards to setting up a match here. Um, one thing to note, the matching grant tool is a uh, reporting and display tool. Um, it's the responsibility of the organization to coordinate with the grantor and to decide how that match will be fulfilled. Um, please note, only online donations will count towards prizes and the leaderboard. Any offline donations, any donations made via check, uh, via any, anything else, cash, um, will not be included in leaderboard and prizes. So if you would like, um, if you are planning on having a match or you're lucky enough to receive a grantor on here, um, you will want to coordinate with them and hopefully get them to make their match online so it can count towards leaderboard and prizes. Um, again, we'll talk more about um, these tools such as matching grants in the fundraising strategies and we'll get more into the nitty gritty of them. But that is a tool that is available to you on the platform to utilize. And then of course, the volunteers opportunity tool allows you to add a volunteer opportunity to your organization profile. Uh, many organizations are already utilizing this tool here. It's a great way to share with donors and share um, to supporters what volunteer opportunities you currently have open um, and have individuals sign up for them directly through your Give Back Tahoe profile. Um, so you would simply add your information here and then that would be added to your profile for people to be able to sign up. What um, something that we've added this year is actually the ability to attach a waiver agreement um, so that if that is something that you do require from volunteers, you are able to attach that so that participants or I'm sorry, volunteers can provide you a signed waiver agreement um, after they've signed up to volunteer. Once you've added a volunteer opportunity, it will show up on your organization profile as I noted. And it will show up at the very bottom of your page, as you see here. Signing up is really easy. All the individual has to do is select the volunteer opportunity they're interested, read more about it, and then select register. And that individual has then, will receive an, an email telling them that they've registered. And as well, if I go back to the volunteer opportunities tool, I'll be able to pull up my volunteer opportunity and see the donor that, or I'm sorry, the volunteer that signed up for that volunteer opportunity. So as I mentioned, um, there are a lot of tools available here uh, that can really help support your campaign and your organization on a year round basis. Um, so I want to take a pause here and help answer any questions that anyone has. Okay, so there's a question about offline donations. Um, so you do have the ability to add offline donations on the platform, um, and that is really easy to do. So you would simply go to your report section, and there is an offline donations area. And then at the very top, there is an add offline donation tool. So as I mentioned, as I was explaining with matching grants, uh, offline donations will not be included in leaderboards and prizes. Um, 
offline donations can be calculated for your profile metric. So this dollar raised at the on your profile. Um, so you can keep track of, in general, the total amount you've received during your challenge or your end of year fundraising. However, you're not going to see those donations included on the leaderboard. So that's just one thing to know if you are planning on adding that. Um, you're not going to see those dollars on your leaderboard. So you may see a discrepancy in your profile metrics and what you're seeing on the leaderboard if you do plan on adding offline donations. And that's why also with matching grants, as I noted, you want to, um, if possible, if your grantor can make their fulfillment online, that's great because it can be counted towards the leaderboard and for prizes then. Okay, I think there's another question in regards to utilizing what type of profile page or what type of campaign page. Um, so again, most organizations will utilize their profile page. Uh, if you are planning to do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, um, let's say you want to get your board of directors together and you want each of them to participate and fundraise together, that's where a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page like this would be useful because it provides you the ability to set up a campaign like that. Um, if you aren't planning on doing a campaign like that, um, you're planning on you know, just soliciting donations, you're not looking for necessarily participants um, or individuals to create fundraisers, et cetera, then your organization profile um, would be perfectly fine to utilize as your primary um, page. And again, we'll talk more about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising in the Fundraising Strategies webinar. Okay, there's another question about EFT information. Um, so to set up EFT or direct deposit, that can be done in your disbursement settings. So if you haven't done so already, you could simply go to disbursement settings and you'll see the area to add EFT. We always highly recommend setting up direct deposit because with check disbursements, they are um, only once a month as opposed to twice a month. And there is a $5 service fee for check disbursements. So we always recommend direct deposit faster, easier, um, and you don't have that $5 service fee. Are there any other questions uh, that will be helpful to go over, help answer for your challenge season? So if you don't have any further questions and you run into questions as you begin logging in and updating your information, please reach out to support at mightycause.com. Uh, we're more than happy to walk through and help uh, you out with whatever um, issue, problem, update that you need assistance with. Um, so we're always there to support you. As I mentioned, we have a great toolkit available to you that will have some really great resources that um, I would definitely recommend checking out. Um, and of course, if you haven't registered yet, you want to make sure that that is always your first step to complete that registration form so that you're approved for the challenge season. And that registration um, form will be open until October 9th. Uh, this webinar will be added to the toolkit. So for anyone that's missed this webinar, uh, you'll this will be provided in the toolkit um, and this will also be shared to you by the Community Foundation. Uh, if there are no further questions, I'm going to uh, stop this webinar here. Uh, and again, feel free to reach out to us with any help or any assistance. We really appreciate you guys taking the time and uh, we hope this was helpful. Thank you so much and have a great day.